Welcome back to Machine Learning for Engineers. We're going to talk about cascade classifiers and how they can be used to detect objects in images. We'll also compare that with deep learning and talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each, in particular with how quickly you can identify an object and the accuracy. We're going to use features to be the inputs for this cascade classifier and I'll talk a little bit about how the Cascade Classifier works, some of the built-in packages in OpenCV, and also with MediaPipe for deep learning. Cascade Classifiers are very fast, and we're gonna be talking about Cascade Classifiers, how they can be used for video processing to be able to detect uh, objects within that image. But first, we need to talk about features. Now, features are the inputs to any kind of learning algorithm. They might be pixels from an image, or we can construct uh, things from those pixels, such as Harris Corner. We did a video on local binary patterns with texture recognition. You also have SIFT, historical, uh, a histogram of oriented gradient. You have SURF, FAST, SUSAN, BIAS, and SIMBA. So you can see many different features. We're gonna be talking about cascade classifiers and in particular, HAR features. Now, HAR features uh, can come in a couple different uh, flavors. You have edge features, line features, and center surrounded features as an example. So for edge features, you're looking for areas, pixels that are light followed by dark in a horizontal or vertical positions. Uh, as you can see here, you can also have them at angles. Now you can also have uh, multiple regions. So for example, this includes three of them where it'd be a light, dark light, uh, et cetera. So how do we use these to do something like detect uh, faces in an image? Okay, so for example, here's a har, har features for face detection where maybe you're looking for something where there's eyebrows followed by a lighter area down beneath and there is the HAR feature for uh, these eyes, okay? Maybe you also are looking for something where there's a gap in between the eyebrows, so you have a dark, light, dark. We'll also uh, compare that later to something like media pipe and how we can detect with deep learning. So just as a spoiler alert, uh, HAR classifiers, um, you know, HAR features with cascade classifiers, are not the most accurate, they are fast, uh, but in general, deep learning has replaced these as the go-to for accuracy and speed. Okay, so, but let's talk about this with, uh, and do a couple examples, just trying to detect faces from this image. Now you can see the ones that are detected here, we're gonna code this up with OpenCV. All right, so let's jump into the code. You can get this from the course webpage. If you just come here, there's a Cascade class, Classifier Notebook with all of the source in there. And you can get it from GitHub. Just select raw, right click, and save link as, and you can save the Jupyter Notebook and open it. Okay, so um, let's first of all, just get this image of the students that are walking. Okay, so there's the image. You can really get any image if you'd like, uh, one of your own, uh, but you need to be able to get that onto your computer. So we've used URL lib request URL uh, retrieve to just be able to download that to the computer and be able to save it locally. All right, there's also the other thing file that we'll need is uh, something that's stored just in OpenCV. We're gonna use the Har Cascade frontal face default. Now, let me just show you what that looks like. If you come to the course webpage, and then this is our, okay, Cascade classifier here. And just come down to um, this activity. There's an XML file link right here. And then it's gonna format it and show what the XML file looks like. So this is a pre-trained, HAR feature cascade classifier, and you can see the different uh, internal nodes, leaf values, and others. 
Okay, so, um, and you can see the numeric values of those. It's very long, okay? And you can see some of the rectangles and other things that are uh, picked out there. Okay, so what this is doing, let me explain this in just a little bit more uh, detail, is it's creating a cascade classifier where you're looking for different features, like maybe feature one is this first one that's looking for eyebrows, for example. And if yes, then you continue on. If not, then you say maybe it's not a face. And then you maybe look at feature two. And that might be a gap between the eyebrows, as we saw there. If not, we say it's not a face. Okay, and we can adjust these sensitivities and how many of these need to be true for it to classify it as a face. And that's going to affect the false positives or false negatives uh, in the image and how we detect these, okay, with some of these uh, sensitivities. And we typically use something like Adaboost uh, or others that are ensemble methods uh, for these tree-based classifiers so we can take weak classifiers and uh, basically boost them, make them strong classifiers. Okay, so that's what the XML file is storing, is all of these decisions about whether to continue on to say, yes, this is a face, or no, it's not. Okay, and that's a greatly oversimplified explanation, but that's how these uh, cascade classifiers work. All right, so what we're going to do now is... Um, just have a draw faces function. We're going to take our results list and then for every one of the results in that list, we're just going to get the x1, y1 width and height. Okay, so the starting point and the width and height. And then we're going to draw uh, the faces. And then I have cascade classifier. I'm going to uh, load this cascade classifier with this face right here. You can see XML. I've loaded that in. Uh, and then I'm going to convert my image to uh, grayscale. Okay. And do the, uh, the cascade classifier based just on gray because I'm just looking for uh, sequences of light and dark. And there are some options here that uh, I also give in the web page. If you want to go back there, um, there are some options that will show you how to potentially improve uh, the cascade classifier. Um, you know, you got your scaling factor, you have min neighbors, and min size and max size. Okay, so those are all available if you want to improve it. And we're going to draw faces now. We're going to identify those and then display the identified faces on the original image as well. So for every one of the faces that we have, we're going to create these patches with uh, rectangles, and then we're going to add uh, the patch and then show the image. Okay, so let's go ahead and just run this, and this will show the faces that it detected. And you can see the boxes where it said the face existed. So, for example, it missed uh, this face, this face, and it also said that this sign was a face. So maybe that thought it was an eyebrow right here. And you can see this one uh, brought out as a subplot. Okay, so it did okay. Got many of them, but uh, you know, not all of them. But let's. one of the other factors on this is you've got this trade-off between speed and accuracy as well. So let's just see how it does with a webcam video now. So I'm going to import time. I'll have uh, a plot that I create. I also have uh, matplotlib patches. And I'll get OpenCV. I'll get uh, have URL lib request, although I don't need that for this one. OK, let's get the camera and display the video. Uh, if you have two webcams, you can switch that. OK, so that is uh, 0 or 1. Okay, based on which webcam you have connected, I'm going to use my default uh, zero one. And then here's my cascade classifier. All right, so I have a window that I create. I'm going to get the trained classifier. You can either do it with eye or with face as well. 
And uh, let's go ahead and just load that. I'm going to do the face first, and then eye is going to be next. Let's go ahead and get the start time, and we'll just do this for 20 seconds. So it'll break automatically. We'll read a camera frame, and then we'll convert to grayscale and identify the faces. Okay, so here's the detection. You use the detect multi-scale. And here's, here are some feet features or sorry options that we have with min size and min neighbors and then the scale factor and then let's go ahead and uh, just say uh, display these the detected faces and show that okay I also put in a cue for the break it's gonna wait one millisecond uh, before uh, running this code again so the wait key is zero if you put that or sorry, is one. If you put that as zero, it's gonna wait for a key press. And so you, for videos, you wanna put wait key of one. All right, and then after we're done, we're gonna release the camera and the video file and destroy the windows. So let me just go ahead and run this and it'll show my webcam. Okay, it takes a little bit to load up, but you can see now there's my webcam and the face that's detected. Um, if I turn to the side, you can see it doesn't necessarily do a good job of tracking it. I'm going to go down and then up. Okay, and you can see it. You just kind of have to be face forward for this. It, after 20 seconds, it'll close the window automatically. But let's just switch this now to um, load in the eye tracking instead. So it's just another cascade classifier that's been created. It's uh, something that's part of OpenCV. And you can see now it's um, tracking my eyes instead of the face. And you can see there are some false uh, positives here. You can see um, other places that are saying, hey, that might be an eye, like you know, right here on this uh, microphone stand, okay? It's saying there might be an eye there as well. All right, but overall it did a fairly good job of uh, tracking my eyes. All right, let's go on to uh, just compare that with deep learning and something like uh, MediaPipe that's, uh, that's an alternative to Cascade classifiers. So I'm going to have uh, MediaPipe as MP. You can just pip install MediaPipe, and I'm going to... Um, import some of these drawing utilities, drawing styles, and then face mesh as well. So these are pre-trained deep learning models similar to how the Cascade classifier is pre-trained. We're just gonna load these in as part of the media pipe package. We're gonna do our video capture again, and then uh, we'll do the MP face mesh, the media pipe face mesh, um, and we're going to go ahead and try to track um, my face, uh, not just the eyes or the outline of the face, but also uh, particular features of the face, so the location of the mouth, uh, the eyes, and uh, the face itself. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead and just capture an image. Okay, we're going to ignore any empty camera frame and use the break instead of continue if you're loading a video. Okay, so I'm um, just some other options. I'm going to convert uh, BGR, the blue, green, red, to RGB. Okay, I'm going to process that image and then I'll draw the face mesh annotations on the image. Okay, we'll make the image writable and then also convert uh, RGB to BGR. All right, and then we'll look for particular landmarks now. All right, so um, we're going to draw these landmarks, and there's just some options. This is face mesh, face mesh tessellation. Here is face mesh contours, and then face mesh irises. So you can pick which ones of these you want to include in the image and draw those over the image. And then we're going to flip the image horizontally for more of a selfie view display. All right, and then we'll wait, in this case, five milliseconds until we hit the Q button. 
All right, and then we'll release the camera and destroy the windows. So this one's not going to go for 20 seconds like the other one, but let's just see how well this one does in comparison to the Cascade classifier. Okay, so you can see my face mesh now, and you can see as I open my mouth, uh, you know, this is opening. This is something that you might see on, you know, a cell phone running to be able to do, you know, face augmentation of, you know, and manipulation of that image on a video call, for example. You can add a hat to your head or things like that. You've probably used these many times, um, you know, on a, uh, on a video call that where you're um, you know playing around with some of these extra features that are part of the the video chat okay so uh, this is able to detect it even if I turn to the side and to the other side um, you know maybe looking down and up so it's doing a much better job than the cascade classifier and let me just go ahead and turn all the way around as well um, you can see how well it did there. Okay, so that's MediaPipe. And you can see deep learning is, uh, you know, just as fast. And, uh, you know, if I open up my performance of my uh, CPU, you can see it's not taking a lot of resources there. Um, you know, so it's not... Uh, overly burdensome for my CPU either. So very fast um, and it's fairly accurate as well. Okay, well that uh, concludes the code demonstration. Let me just go back here to the web page and just give you a preview of what's coming next. So we're talking about cascade classifiers here and some of the features that we talked about You've got the local binary pattern. Uh, there's this example down here for texture classification that gets more into local binary patterns and how they're used to generate these features. You also have the information about HAR cascade classifiers. Okay, so HAR features um, with a ca cascade classifier and then these example activities here identifying the faces and then um, be able to download for video and then you also have the media pipe face detection here as well okay there are related examples here as well you can select those links and thanks to dj lee a byu electrical and computer engineering professor who provided a lot of this material today